Welcome to an extremely nerdy and in-depth look at how to collimate a Newtonian. Uh, I have spent two years battling with these Newtonians, and believe it or not, there are more that I've battled with, and I feel like I really know how to do it now, and I'd like to squish everything that I've learned into this video. This tutorial is split into two parts. Basic collimation is where I show you the theory of collimation and how to collimate your scope using either a collimation cap, a Cheshire eyepiece, or a laser collimator. This should be enough for you to achieve excellent collimation. Then, for my patrons, we go into some really in-depth stuff, because to get great collimation, or if you've run into collimation problems, you actually need to look at the mechanics of a scope. So, we will check, and I'll show you how to check that your focuser is straight. I'll show you how to work out and check that your secondary mirror is in exactly the right position. I'll show you how to check that your, the weight of your camera isn't causing your telescope to flex. And then finally, the best thing really that everyone should know about is a good way of collimating using the stars. And I have tried many methods and this method stands out. Feel free to jump ahead if you want to any of those sections, but bear in mind I've structured the whole thing from rough collimation to amazing collimation, and there is bits of theory as you go along, the, as you progress along, which is probably useful if you want to get an all round good understanding of how to collimate a telescope. Alrighty, let's start with a bit of theory. So, the light from some distant galaxy comes through the front hole in the Newtonian, it passes down the tube, hits the primary mirror at the back, which is curved, so it bends the light, which means the light comes back up the tube, but as it does so it's getting more and more focused. It then hits the secondary mirror, which is completely flat, and its only job is really to bounce the light up to the camera. And hopefully the light comes to full focus on the camera sensor, which is about there. Now it's only really the primary mirror that is optically active. The secondary mirror is completely inert, optically speaking. It just reflects the light up towards the camera. You could get rid of the secondary mirror and the light would hit the primary mirror and it would come back up the tube and it would start going out here. And as long as you had the camera out here, and as long as the camera wasn't shadowing the entirety of the primary mirror, then the Newtonian would work just the same. Optically speaking, no difference. And it's in this configuration that I would like to give you a very simple but entirely correct overview of what we're trying to do when we collimate a Newtonian. We want to get the primary mirror pointing exactly at the camera, and we want to get the camera pointing exactly back at the primary mirror. That's it. The primary mirror is very easy to point. It's, got, it's in a primary mirror cell and there are knobs that allow you to get an exact angle on that primary mirror. The slightly tricky thing is that the camera is not so easy to point because it is stuck inside a focuser. So instead of wiggling the camera around, what we do is we wiggle the secondary mirror to get the camera pointing directly at the primary mirror. Now the smarty pants amongst you will have realised that if we adjust the secondary mirror to get the camera pointing at the primary mirror, then if the primary mirror was pointing at the camera, by the time we've adjusted the secondary mirror, then it won't be any more. So, I always adjust my secondary mirror first before adjusting the primary mirror. Thing is, adjusting the secondary mirror isn't entirely straightforward. The way the secondary mirror is adjusted in modern scopes is extremely confusing and this stuffs a lot of people up. Most folks have a secondary that looks something like this, right? It's got three little holes in it which you have to stick an allen key in and turn a grub screw which then pokes out the end and helps you adjust the uh, angle and it's got a middle screw. Normally you need to turn it with a screwdriver. I've got a knob in here for loosening and tightening it up, okay? That's the modern way of doing it. 
but the old way is perhaps much more intuitive so this is from my red devil and uh, it simply has a rod which is uh, clamped down and you can twist the rod to change the rotational angle of the secondary mirror and then at the bottom it's got a little screw and that screw will push the angle of the mirror up and down and this is great because you don't need to do any more than that you just want to rotate your secondary and move the angle of the mirror up or down those are the only th two things you need to do a lot of people uh, get confused with these three um, grub screws here and they think that you need to change each one well actually actually you don't what you need to do is loosen the big middle screw so that you can rotate it and then just use the grub screws to change the angle to make it either go up or down so you'll be turning say the top grub screw one turn and the bottom grub screws half a turn each to keep the bottom two grub screws in unison so now we are ready to adjust the angle of the secondary mirror to get the camera pointing directly at the primary mirror. Now this is, is really ri ridiculously straightforward in a sense because all you have to do is look down the uh, focuser tube and if the secondary mirror is angled correctly then yeah you'll see in the reflection the whole of the primary mirror along with the clips that are holding it in. And because it seems like I'm way off, I'm going to adjust the secondary mirror to sort of roughly see all those clips. So I know the secondary mirror is now pointing in roughly the right direction. And I expect you'll see your eyeball pointing straight back at you. And that means that the primary mirror is pointing in roughly the right direction too. But really we need to get much much more precise than this because the problem with this very very simple method of doing it is that your eye might not be directly above the focuser it might be a bit too far forward or back or left or right to solve this problem us nerds use a collimation cap which is basically a disc which fits in your focuser with a hole in the middle and on the other side it's got a little reflective sheet now this is surprisingly good and all it does Literally all it does is make sure your eye is right over the centre of the focuser tube. Alright, so I'm looking down, I can see that I'm a bit off now. So I need to twist this round. When those three clips that hold the primary mirror in place are all in the exact centre of my field of view, I can be confident that the camera will be looking straight at the primary mirror. However, something still looks a bit off. And that's because the primary mirror isn't pointing back at the camera. To get the primary mirror pointing straight back at the camera, we need to adjust the knobs on the back of the primary mirror cell. You normally get a knob which is attached to a spring, which will actually move that side of the mirror in or out, and a locking screw. It helps to have long arms for this bit. First thing I do is loosen the locking screws, and then I can start adjusting the angle of the primary mirror. And my goal is to get the cap's reflection centred. Yay, there we go, in the middle, okay. And then I gently turn the locking screws. Normally when you do this, everything goes off a bit and you have to jiggle. The super cheap and easy to use collimation cap is good enough to collimate my red devil. The thing is, when you get shorter, well, stockier scopes like this uh, they have a tend to have a faster f ratio yeah now these scopes need better collimation probably better than what you can achieve with a collimating cap so for this scope we are going to use dun, 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 a cheshire eyepiece the main difference between a collimation cap and a Cheshire eyepiece is that the Cheshire eyepiece has crosshairs about 15 centimetres away from the little hole at the top. And this forces your eye to align even more accurately. All right, now that we're going to get more accurate, I actually want to not use this holder. Because if the Cheshire eyepiece is angled slightly wrong, right, it's going to affect our collimation. And the problem with this kind of holder is it's got a screw at the end. Can you see that? 
and that screw there when you put the Cheshire into it it will just push the Cheshire eyepiece you know that way so it'll be slightly off center so I much prefer to use uh, this adapter, this 2 inch to 1.25 inch adapter, which is a twist lock adapter, which when I slot the Cheshire in, I twist lock it in, and now the Cheshire eyepiece is centered. As always, we start by moving the secondary mirror to make sure the camera is pointing directly at the primary mirror. Already I'm in trouble because I can't see the clips that are holding the mirror in, which I use to align the red devil and that's because the tube is so long that my field of view is too narrow to see the clips luckily this mirror has a donut in right in the center and my first job is to align the donut right in the center with those crosshairs i loosen the central screw and rotate the whole mirror to get the donut above or below those crosshairs don't forget to retighten the central screw okay so I vertically aligned it, but now the donut is a bit too low. So I now need to adjust the uh, grub screws. Anyway, basically you fiddle around, but always do the bottom two grub screws equally so that we just move in the mirror vertically up and down, right? Don't start looking at what's reflected in the primary mirror. Just look at the donut and the crosshairs at the end of the Cheshire eyepiece. That's not bad. So the next thing we need to do is get the primary mirror point in the right direction. And a little tip with this particularly crappy mirror cell is to tip the telescope vertically. Then you can loosen the locking screws without fear of the mirror flopping forward. Our goal is to tilt the primary mirror in such a way that the reflection of the Cheshire lines up with the donut and the Cheshire's crosshairs. To move the mirror of course we're twisting those grub screws. I'm getting closer but it's very hard to film so I'm going to have to show you graphically. So the Cheshire's crosshairs should be aligned with the primary mirror's donut which are then both aligned to the reflection of the Cheshire. You have to ignore the oval shaped reflection of the secondary mirror as a whole. This is very likely to be offset. So your final alignment should look something like this. When you get there Tighten up the locking screws and then you'll probably have to fiddle some more. Okay, check it on the horizontal. It's good. Now, this is now pretty much as good a collimation as you can get in the daytime. And yet, I don't use a Cheshire collimator. Well, sometimes I do. Most of the time, I use this, a laser. Now you'd think that if I put the laser in place of the Cheshire Collimator, right, screwed it in properly so that it's nice and centered and turned it on, you'd think that the laser beam would go down here, hit the secondary, bounce smack bang in the middle of the primary mirror because I've lined up the secondary, come straight back, hit the secondary again, come back up the tube and land in this little target area, dead center. You'd think that's what would happen, wouldn't you? Well, let's see, shall we? And it hasn't. And the reason for that is because the laser isn't pointing straight. Here's a simple little jig that I can rest the laser on. And when I spin it round, you'll see that the laser traces out a circle. Now I need to adjust with an Allen key, the angle that the laser is pointing to get it pointing more straight. Now that the laser is collimated, let's see how we do. Just get this tightened up. Ooh, we're much closer now, but the laser collimator doesn't seem to think the Cheshire collimator got it spot on, because if it did then that laser would be right in the central hole. Uh, I think this laser now it's collimated is, is better than the Cheshire um, and looking down the tube I can see that in fact my secondary is a teeny bit off. Look can you see it's, it's just one side of the donut so I'll, I'll probably to get this as good as I can right now I'll probably adjust the secondary a little bit and that'll mean in turn I'll have to adjust the primary. 
to show you how easy collimation with a laser is, I'm going to do a fresh collimation on this GSO F4 Newtonian. Let's see how quick I can do it. First thing, get the secondary points in at the primary. We do that by lining up the secondary mirror vertically first with the central screw. This is pointing a bit too high, so I will use these bolts to bring it down. Okay, there we go. Secondary is good. The red dot is hitting the middle of the donut on the primary. Now we need to get the primary point back in the right place. If the primary mirror cell is a long way off, the laser won't be anywhere on the target. And you need to get the primary mirror cell roughly right using a collimation cap. Once you've gotten close, pop the laser back in. The laser dot will now appear on the target and you can continue to refine the angle of the primary mirror by adjusting the knobs on the primary mirror cell. I personally think a good laser will give you great collimation. Alrighty, I'm afraid this is where non-patrons leave us. If you are still having problems with collimation and you're not a patron, I would recommend that you check that your focuser is pointing straight. You check that your um, secondary mirror holder is pointing straight down the tube. You s check that the position of your secondary mirror is slap bang where it should be. Uh, you check that the camera isn't causing flex in your um, focuser or in the tube itself and that that's putting you out of collimation. Um, these are all really good things to do. Uh, A, to sort out any problems you have with collimation and also actually to get really accurate collimation. And patrons, you guys are lucky because I'm gonna go through all that stuff first before we collimate this under the stars. But like I said, collimating under the stars is really the be all and end all in Newtonian collimation. Um, nothing beats it and I've discovered a very easy and supremely accurate method that even takes account of flex and if you've got a little bit of tilt in your camera sensor. I mean, it really is that accurate, it's amazing. Okay, but um, the rest of you say goodbye. Uh, if you wanna become a patron, it's three pounds a month. You can join for just one month if you want. You'll get access to this full video and any other tutorial videos that I have. Uh, there should be more coming. Um, you also get access to secret, well, hidden channels on my Discord server. One of them is called Ask a Mega Nerd, and it is uh, devoted to answering your questions quickly by either me, if you type at Astro Biscuit, or any of the other mega nerds who are there. So that's a really useful tool to have in your arsenal if you're like out in the field and you need some help quickly. Uh, patients also can message me directly, they get to sneak peek of my big videos and most of all uh, patrons really do keep me afloat and that means I can make my big epic videos. So thank you patrons, please become a patron even if it's just for one month. Uh, all right, bye. Oh. Uh, I've got a link below to a good laser collimator. It's only 50 quid. I don't know why you need to spend more. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye.